Hi everyone, I'm Tom Letty and I'm an Architect Evangelist at Salesforce. This video is part of our Getting Started with Salesforce Diagrams video series. And what we're going to do today is convert the diagram from our Diagram Anti-Patterns video into a Level 4 Documentation and Implementation Diagram, specifically a data model. So if you haven't already seen our Diagram Anti-Patterns video, you might want to check that one out first and come back, but either way we've got a lot of great information for you in this one. We have a really good video that does a deep dive into diagram levels, and on architect.salesforce.com you can also read up about them. So make sure to check out those two resources if you want to learn more. But for a quick summary, this diagram is going to have some pretty deep technical details because unlike some of the higher level diagrams that you might want to share with business or executive stakeholders, our audience for this one is specifically going to be implementation teams who need that level of detail. All right, here we are in Lucidchart with our original diagram that has a lot more stuff in it than what we really need to show in a data model. So I'm going to make a copy of it to make sure we don't lose anything important. And now let's get rid of anything that isn't really applicable. All right, now just like in all of our other diagrams, I'm going to add a header. And I'm not going to spend too much time here because you can check out our kit of parts video to learn more about how to build a diagram header. Now let's add some cards for our objects. And you might notice that a lot of these objects are mentioned more than once in the diagram. Yeah, that's an anti-pattern. These are all the same objects. The reason they look like this right now is because I tried to cram way too much information into the original diagram. That's really it. I also want to call out the case object in particular because this is another anti-pattern that I see pretty often. So these three boxes are supposed to represent the many side of a one-to-many relationship. But if you use the right endpoints on your connectors, you won't really need to do things like this. Speaking of connectors, let's go ahead and draw some now. This time we're going to use the right endpoints so that we can show cardinality and optionality and we won't have to use those three boxes like we did before. If you want to learn more about how to use these, go ahead and check out our connectors and endpoints video which does a deeper dive into all the different types of endpoints and what they're used for. Okay, so this is already looking a lot better, but we can still add some more information. Some of these objects have different owners, and that's something that's going to be important for an implementation team to know because it's going to affect the way that they set up the security model. So let's use the metadata footers in our cards to show that information. And we can also use footer icons to show things like organization-wide defaults, which are also going to affect the security model. So let's say some of these objects are private and some others are controlled by parent. And we might also want to call out that these one-to-many relationships might be places that we need to look for large data volumes. So we can use a footer icon for that too. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is add some attributes to our objects. Now, attributes mean different things in different types of diagrams. And in a data model, we usually use them to represent field names. But something that's really important to point out here is that we're not going to list every field in every object in this diagram. You would use a data dictionary for that, not a data model. In the diagram, we're only going to list fields that are relevant for the diagram itself. The IDs that are going to be used as keys in the relationships would be a good example. All right, we have one last step, which is to line everything up and take a look at our finished diagram. Okay, so this looks a lot better. And as a bonus, we've even added some additional details that weren't in the original diagram. And that's going to make this even more helpful for an implementation team. Okay, so we just turned that old diagram into something that's going to be a lot more useful for everybody that has to work with it. Make sure to check out our other videos in this series, especially our other anti-pattern videos if you want to learn how to do more things like this. And if you found this content to be helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time.